Greetings, programmers, and welcome to this launch webinar for Rad Studio, Delphi, and C++ Builder 11.1 Alexandria. Joining me today on the screen is, include Marco Cantu, our product lead for IDE and tooling, and Kyle Wheeler, the developer tools product manager. Also behind the scenes are David Millington, another one of our great product managers. He'll be on for Q&A and helping to answer questions is Stephen Ball, our pre-sales director who works with all of our amazing SCs. We're uh, coming to you live from various locations. Uh, Kyle's got his new corner office at the uh, local coffee shop. <laughs> and uh, we're here for the launch of 11.1 .1 Alexandria. The, so we do have a pre-recorded presentation we're going to run here in just a minute, but just wanted to say hello to everybody before we got started. And we will be here to answer your questions and such behind the scenes, and then we'll have a Q&A portion at the end. So we have about a half an hour pre-recorded, and then about a half an hour or so for questions. Uh, anything before we get started, Kyle? Yeah, um, first, thank you guys for joining us. Um, I know that um, 11 uh, Alexandria was greeted with uh, with much praise and success, but um, we knew that there were still some things that we needed to do to make it um, you know, live up to its potential. And this release does that. So we're really excited to bring 11.1 to market. Um, Marco, David, our PM team, our developers have done an awesome job um, really listening to the feedback that we have from the community, listening to uh, bug requests, uh, feature requests, things like that, um, going in and, and honing those down into something that was actionable. And I think we've done a really good job of, of delivering uh, some quality enhancements across the board. Uh, same underpinnings that were there for Alexandria, but we built on it. So consider this the uh, second year model of a new car, uh, and we expect that it, uh, it will deliver on the results that you guys uh, have been asking for. So um, I don't know if Marco, do you want to send any capstone notes before we get started with the pre-recording? No, I'm very pleased about this release. And uh, yeah, well, I, I, as you'll see in a bit, um, I think we have a, a very good um, amount of quality. I was just checking and our 700 issues, we just closed on, on QP. That happened this morning because there is, there is some manual process. Um, and we also be able to squeeze in a few features here and there that they are certainly nice, although they're not uh, extraordinary. Um, and that's what we want to keep doing, keep keep improving the product quality for the 11 series and and add features alongside uh, to to fulfill the most relevant request from customers. Yeah, it, uh, I was just talking to my daughter this morning. Apple just unveiled their new uh, spec bump phone. So it's kind of like, that <laughs> it's not the revolutionary new release, but it is the the nice improvement, fixing some things, and add a couple new features. There's a few things actually that were that were right in the uh, area I appreciate the most as well. So we, uh, like I said, I have that pre-recorded uh, presentation we're going to run right now, and there's a few demos and some slides and stuff there, and then we will be back to answer your questions. So if you do have any questions, you can put them in the question panel as we go along. And then at the end, we will come on and address your questions. So thanks, everybody, for joining us. And we will see you all on the flip side. Jim, real quick, just before we, we move into that, we're getting some questions about introductions. And just so you guys know who we are, uh, oh. Jim, um, yeah, chief developer, advocate, community advocate. I don't know what your actual title is. Um, yeah. Jim basically wrangles, uh, wrangles our team of MVPs and um, does a lot of support there. And also pushes us to uh, to keep up with the latest trends that are going on in the in, in the world of development. Um, Marco, um, PM uh, under Rad Studio over Rad Studio and some of our tooling. Um, we've also got um, let's see Stephen Ball on the call, who is uh, our one of our chief sales engineers, um, and uh, and then David Millington will be joining us as well, one of the PMs as well, uh, focused on C plus plus. And myself, Kyle Wheeler, uh, GM of Embarcadero. Um, if you've been with us for a while, um, and, uh, basically stepped in to uh, support Ops and Ops in the work that he's been doing. So, um, anyways, uh, sorry for the. Uh, we just assume that everybody knows who we are, but uh, <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe that's a, a misstep. Um, and also, it's just less important that you know who we are and just know that 11.1 is here. So, um, and with that, I guess we'll get started. 
Hi, this is Marco Cantu, and I'm going to introduce you to the new features in Rust Studio 11.1 Alexandria. Before I'm focusing specifically on what's new in the product, let me recap why we are doing what we are doing at Embarcadero. There are a few things in the IT landscape that are directly driving our decisions. One is Microsoft Windows 11 release. We are fully focused on it. It's the key reason we picked 11 as a product number and we are increasingly supporting the Windows App SDK, the new dev platform that is available alongside the classic Windows API. We are also looking into transition to ARM on desktop and that was specifically done in Rust Studio 11 by adding support for a Delphi compiler native for the M1 chips for macOS. And finally, because all developers and most of the end users are moving to high resolution monitor and multi-screen, multi-monitor systems, we are focusing on 4K and multi-resolution application for our user interface library. Before I get to the specifics of what's in Rust Studio 11 and 11.1, let me recap one second why Rust Studio is great and why it's great in today's development environment. First is the developer productivity, which is significantly faster compared to competing tools. You can build application with UI across platforms or for Windows in a very fast and efficient way, preview it immediately, have a better developer productivity overall. And also you're producing a native and fast compile application. There is no code bloat, there's no one gigabyte runtime to download. It's using native compilers, producing native binaries on each of the platforms that we support. No execution environment to rely upon, to install on the user machine. It's, it's purely an X copy deployment. We also offer one of the best in the industry database access layers with Fardac and other third party libraries. Database access is key to initial design of Delphi and even key to its name. And it's integral part of Rust Studio. We also allow, if you're using C++ Builder, to access hundreds of C++ libraries that can be used in actually both Delphi and C++ Builder via Rust Studio. We offer you platform APIs on all platforms, so if the components and high-end libraries we offer do not cover the specific API you need to call, you can go low level and call any of the platform's APIs. We offer visual designers that lets you prototype an application faster within the ID itself and just complete it and finish it with, it with a single development environment. That is, even has mobile previews while you are designing. It has integrated styling for mobile and Windows VCL applications today. We have a strong community full of technology partners, MVPs, expert professionals, trainers, authors, and a lot of developers out there who are focused on building great applications with Delphi and C++ Builder. And last thing, but not the least, we offer a impressive backwards compatibility. You can take your five years old, 10 years old, 15, 20 years old application and move them over rapidly to a new version of Rust Studio rather than having to restart development from scratch, which is what most of our competitors would ask you to do if you have a 20 years old code base. Now that we've looked to the overall landscape and why Rust Studio is great, let's start getting into what we did in 11.0, and that's just a very short summary. We focused a lot on the IDE, providing for the first time a high DPI IDE and high DPI enabled form designers. We offer the ability to preview styles in the VCL form designer and also improve the FireMonkey designer for high DPI support. We significantly increase the quality of language server protocol and code completion, code insight in general in Delphi and offered a new C++ code formatter. We created a brand new welcome page based on VCL components and integrated support for Visual Studio code in terms of language server protocol for Delphi. In terms of Delphi and C++ compilers and the related tooling, we focus on C++ quality, improving the RTTI, specifically integration with Delphi components, the exception handling support. We delivered a new compiler 
for Delphi, for macOS ARM, 64-bit, targeting the new Apple Silicon M1 CPUs natively. Offered a few small Delphi language improvements. In terms of libraries, we did a lot of work on the Delphi runtime library quality from tzip files, 64-bit data structures, Bluetooth LE, and more. We did significant vCell modernization work, improved FireMonkey on High DPI on Windows and desktop, so also macOS. And for Windows, we started including WebView 2 as the native web browser. We offered support for new API level for Android and did a lot of related work for both Android and um, iOS. We also introduced support for an additional Delphi platform, which is the Windows subsystem for Linux version 2 that is included in the most recent version of Windows. On Windows 11, we also offer support for the Linux GUI via FMX Linux for the Windows subsystem for Linux. So you can actually run a Linux GUI application on a Windows 11 system. If that's what we've done in Brass Studio 11, let's start now looking specifically to what's new in 11.1. And primarily the focus of this entire release was on quality, enhancing and improving the great features that we delivered in Rust Studio 11. The focus was on usability, performance, stability of the new features and also some ex pre-existing features. We added a few small ID features, but that's not the centerpiece of the work. We significantly improved coding site, the LSP engines for both languages, Delphi and C++. And in terms of platforms, since the release of Delphi and C++ Villa 11, there have been four new operating systems released by the major vendors that we now officially support in Rust Studio 11.1. That is Windows 11, Mac OS 12 Monterey, iOS 15, and Android 12. I wanted to demonstrate targeting these new platforms from Rad Studio 11.1. Right now, I'm on Windows 11, and my application runs just as expected. So let's switch over to Mac OS 12.3, Monrig, running on the new Apple M1 ARM-based CPU. Again, it compiles and deploys beautifully. Now we will target Android 12, which is running here on my Pixel 4 XL. After a quick compile, the application launches on Android 12. And last but not least, we will target iOS 15.4. It deploys through my M1 Mac via PA server and onto my iPhone XR running the latest iOS. The quality work was significant throughout all of the libraries that we shipped. Again, in terms of quality and performance, we also did a few small additions, but the work on Delphi runtime library, database libraries, VCL, and FireMonkey was primarily focused on improving the quality and the existing experience. With that overview in mind, let's start looking into the specific product areas to see what's exactly new and what's improved. Let me start with the Rust Studio IDE, and you can see it has a slightly modified new look and feel through change in the welcome page. As I mentioned, primarily in 11.0, we focused a lot on the high DPI IDE, enable high DPI designer, and allow using styles in the VCL designers. These three areas have been at the forefront of our quality focus. We did extensive high DPI ID quality to better use the IDE with remote desktop, improving the toolbar and the toolbar buttons layout the sizing of fonts through most of the windows of the IDE, depending on your DPI, better scaling when you're dragging any win between monitors with different resolution or dragging the entire IDE between monitors with different resolutions. Added a few more of the ID fix pack improvements in the product 
As mentioned, we focused a lot on the high DPI designers for both VCL and Faramonkey and the style designer in terms of fixing issues that were reported by customers after the introduction in version 11. We reworked the Getty dialogue on two sides. We created a new UI based on the VCL T control list. Being a virtualized list, this offers much better performance because it only paints the items that are visible on screen. And we added to it image caching. So images for the various components are downloaded just once and cached locally on file. So they're not re-downloaded from the internet every time you open the Gadget package manager. Very small thing, but relevant. After installation or after adding new platforms, the start working moves you into user mode rather than admin mode. So you end up with the same ID configuration that you're generally using. While the focus was primarily on quality, we did a few ID enhancements. The message view is now color coded. You can have different colors for errors, warning, and hints. So you can better find the most relevant pieces of information there. The new items dialog indicates the platforms any of the item is available for and also allows different views in terms of, of the form layout. Finally, the compile dialog shows the platforms you are building for and the build configuration that is actively used. So you don't have to refer back to the project manager, but you can immediately see after a failed or successful compilation, which platform you were building for and which build configuration was active. As mentioned earlier, in 11.0, we added a new welcome page with completely new content. It's VCL based rather than being browser based and allows you to modify the layout of the different panes and decide what you want to show and where you want to show it. This was the first step of a larger project that now is getting completed in 11.1 with the support for adding custom frames with the new tools API. There are ready to use demos as part of the Rust 11 demos repository on GitHub. On top of it, we allow a background wallpaper. There are three predefined for each of the standard styles dark light and um, mountain mist, but you can just add a custom JPEG image to the background of your welcome page. Let's take a closer look at the new welcome page. It comes with a few nice wallpapers installed for each style. Here is dark and we can switch over to the colorful light style or the subdued mountain mist background image. But let's customize the wallpaper. The default wallpapers are found in the background images folder, but you can browse for any JPEG or PNG file. Just pick the one you like and it scales to fit your welcome page. And you can set a custom wallpaper for each theme. Wallpapers are nice, but thanks to the new OTAPI support, you can add plugins to your welcome page. You can find basic samples on GitHub but I've made a few enhancements to these plugins. And once I install them on my welcome page, it's now much more useful for me. Coding side has been specifically enhanced across both Delphi and C++ Builder. For the Delphi LSP work, the main focus was improving the background compilation that takes place. And we have gained, in most common scenarios, performance improvement, which is five to 30 times. So that 10, 15 seconds delay now becomes like a one second delay. This is more relevant for units with lots of dependencies, but it's general throughout most of the code bases. 
We also did a few improvements in how code completion manages some of the type parameters, the generic parameters, set types, and a few other cases that were not working properly in Rust Studio 11. Similarly, on the C++ side, we improved a lot in terms of performance and completeness of the features. In some cases, we're really seeing a significant boost in the time that it takes to start completion. The release is significant and we think you'll be much better off in 11.1 compared to past versions. We are also planning a special C++ only release of Rust Studio 11.1 with additional improvements in performance and quality of the C query based code completion. If that's what's new in the IDE, let's now focus on C++ and Delphi compilers and related tools to see what changed. In 11.0, as mentioned, we had the support for macOS 64-bit ARM for Delphi and a few minor language features to the Delphi language. For C++, we, improved, we focused on quality, exception handling, and C++ Delphi interop. Now in 11.1, we did some further work on the Delphi side in terms of stability and performance, specifically when the compiler is used by the Delphi LSP engine. We improved our existing support for some of the Windows security settings. There's more in the coming pages, so I'll, I'll provide more details soon. We switched the Delphi debuggers for macOS ARM 64-bit and Android 64-bit to LLDB from different technologies. This is part of a strategic direction for Rust Studio debuggers to switch towards LLDB, which is the LLVM-based debugger technology. While this doesn't solve all of the issues that these debuggers have, they are now more reliable and stable and we'll use the coming releases to further improve the mapping of Delphi data types to these uh, debuggers. In terms of C++, we further improve the Delphi runtime library and type integration, for example, with better mapping of dynamic arrays to STL iterators. Let me focus a bit on these new linker options some of these features were already available at the low level through compiler flags, but now they are directly exposed in the linker options for both Delphi and C++. Not only, but these features are now all enabled by default as part of our focus on overall security of the applications you build, but they are also enabled in our own executables and runtime packages to help create a more secure development environment overall. The first is data execution prevention. This marks pages of memory as non-executable. That makes it hard to do buffer overruns and similar exploits. The Android address space layout randomization loads applications in different memory locations every time. So again, it makes it difficult for an attacker to inject code in a specific location because that location is different every time. There is also a high entropy 64-bit address space layout randomization option, and there is support to create terminal server aware applications in directly from the Rust Studio IDE. These are the Delphi compiler linking options in Rust Studio 11.1 for the specific features I just mentioned. And these are the C++ linker options to achieve the same. This directly affects the executable that is generated. If you use a tool like Process Explorer by SysInternals, you can exactly see in some of the settings and configurations what you gain by default. Again, some of these features were available already, but had to be manually enabled in the Delphi compiler, and they were not obvious. Now we're making them easier to enable and use, and we turn them on by default. After covering the ID and the tool chain, let me focus on library and on the quality work and improvements we did in the various libraries that ship with Rust 11.1. In terms of DCL, following the modernization work we did in 11.0 with the new reach edit and a large collection of improvements, we went back to some of the same components to do further enhancements and cleanup, including the T-Tree view, Rich Edit, Edge Browser, Label Edit, Number Box. We did some improvements around flickering and double buffering and um, high DPI and scaling issues. We have also released, that happened a month ago on the Delphi anniversary, 
uh, Delphi Win UI 3 demo available in Gadget. That is part of our Windows app SDK focus. Today, the Win UI 3 support is fairly limited in terms of merging Win UI 3 with existing native applications, but we are closely monitoring the enhancement that Max will be doing in this space and will provide updated integration and support once Microsoft offers a more powerful library. In FireMonkey, the focus has been in general in 11.0 to desktop and mobile improvements, again, with a lot of focus on high DPI and targeting latest version of Android, plus the integration of WebView 2. These were all, again, subject of quality work, in particular around Tilly's View and T-Web Browser, but also in terms of the improved SDK integration, Windows HDPI related issues, and focus on performance in a few areas of FireMonkey. For the Latvia Runtime Library, again, this is a summary of what we did in 11.0, which is quite a lot. In Delphi 11.1, we added one new feature, which is the T-URL stream class. It's a stream descendant that supports asynchronous operations, unlike all of the other stream classes. We added specific support for Windows 11 and the latest Windows Server in the TOS version data structure. Additionally, the focus was up on optimization of some of the core RTL functions and a significant amount of quality work overall. In terms of data and interrelated improvements, in 11.1, we added a better integration of FireDuck with the structure view. Also for FireDuck, we added support for the last version of MariaDB. 10.6 for SQLite encryption extension. That's a feature that we released as part of a get it package for 11.0 and now it's folded as part of the core product. And finally, specific support for the new data types in Firebird 4. In terms of RAD server, we added to the pre-built REST APIs support for sys admin endpoints, allowing you to automatically do operations like logs management, database backups and restore, and database validation overall. We also improved the support for RAT Server Lite, a feature introduced in 11.0, which allows you to embed an IB2Go in RAT Server, making it very easy to deploy and allowing a limited deployment. For this feature, we added an integrated deployment support as part of the IDE directly. We keep improving and working on the various web technologies that we provide. We added the ability to create a web broker application on Android for Delphi that allows you to have a web server on a developer board more than a phone and also improve the quality of DataSnap, a technology we're not enhancing in significant ways, but we keep providing fixes for as it is used by a number of our customers. That provides a list of the most relevant work we did in terms of quality and features in Rust Studio 11.1. Another way to measure the amount of work that was done in terms of quality is to look at quality portal and its raw numbers. We have provided specific fixes in Rust Studio 11.1 for over 650 quality portal issues, primarily bugs, but also a handful of new features. If we look at the data in quality portal in terms of issues addressed by each product area, it comes quite clear that the focus was primarily on the IDE with over 250 issues reported by customers addressed in this release. Also, FireMonkey and VCL had around 100 issues fixed in each area, uh, again, talking about public reported issues, while the runtime library had roughly 50 issues addressed, so the data section of the product and the compiler. Along with the work we've done in building RAS Studio 11.1 and the great quality it delivers, there are two additional product initiatives that are worth mentioning. One is the Uppercept AWS SDK for Delphi that was introduced last December, and it's going to have continuous releases over time. This library for Amazon Web Service is included in Enterprise and Architect Editions and is focused on Delphi. Also for Delphi, we have provided our UI libraries free to Python developers. At the same time, we are encouraging Python developers to get a full license of Delphi to deliver additional power and features 
to the integration. If you are already on Delphi, you can use Python in your Delphi applications to augment the value of the solutions you are delivering in some of these spaces like big data or artificial intelligence where Python really shines. In summary, what we did on Rust 2.11.1 was a focus on quality and improvements, making sure the usability performance and stability of IDE is better than before, focusing on the high DPI ID quality, the high DPI designers, and the style from designer, enhancing and improving the welcome page, the get it dialogue, and adding a few small new ID features. We improved the C++ CQuery LSP engine and the Delphi LSP performance and quality. We officially support Windows 11, Mac OS 12, iOS 15 and Android 12. We switched the Delphi Mac OS 64-bit ARM debugger and Android 64-bit debugger to the LLDB debugger engine and improved the C++ standard template library and runtime library. Rust 2.11.1 offers performance and quality improvements and small additions to the Delphi runtime library, the database library, VCL and FireMonkey, specifically focusing on quality, but also providing uh, some new features as we have seen. And with that, we really hope you enjoy using Rust Studio 11.1, which delivers on the great new features of Rust Studio 11, offering incredible usability, performance, and stability to all Delphi and C++ Builder developers. Thanks. Great, thank you, Marco. So if you're joining us live, now it's time for Q&A. Go ahead and put your questions in the question panel. And we have the whole crew here, David Millington, Marco Cantu, myself, Jim McKeith, and of course, Kyle Wheeler. We'll do our best to answer your questions in the time we have. So uh, Kyle is, I believe, available, but not with video right now. Um, but David Millington has joined us. Thanks for joining, David. And I just discovered that some of my samples that I showed in there, I was using a release candidate and not the final version. So I'm reinstalling Red Studio right now <laughs> at the same time. But that's great. Uh, everything worked in the, in the release candidate, so it should be the same. Oh, shh, don't tell anybody. Uh, so there's a couple comments in here about serial ports communication with VCL C++ uh, programs. There, there's a, I know there's components in Git it, and I think don't we include one in uh, in Rad Studio as well, David? Do you know on that C++? I'm sorry, uh, com ports. Serial ports. I'm sorry. Yeah, for serial ports, I don't think we have something in build, but there are several free components. Uh, they've been around for many years that, I mean, they're written in Delphi, but they should work fine in C++. I did see those questions and there was a comment that one was commercial and I mean, yes, there may well be commercial ones as well, but there definitely should be at least one free one um, available. That's your know, very, very long standing sort of component, free component functionality. Yeah, uh, Async Pro is in Git it for free. Um, I was I was watching a talk the other day on software architecture, and they said uh, I can't remember the quote, but essentially it was like, um, oh, I wish I remembered. It basically he said uh, the first thing as an architect, your job is to see what can I buy off the shelf and don't have to invent from scratch, which is so true. I mean, it's up to you. It's 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 your time, but. That's the thing is if someone ever asks, can you ever ask, can I do something with Delphi or C++ Builder? The answer is always yes, but it might involve more time than you're expecting. <laughs> um, lots of great people running from all over the world. This is fantastic. Um, I, I don't have a graph showing. Maybe I can try and do that, do a graph to show where people are coming from all around the world and post that on the blog. That would be cool to cover. Uh, oh, uh, Stephen, actually, Stephen Ball, do you want to just put that in the chat, the link for Async Pro? Uh, he was just posted in our uh, administrator chat. IB to go licenses. Marco, how does that work with uh, with Rad Studio, Delphi, and C++ Builder? I know there is different, like, the license you get is different based on the edition you have or something like that? Um, yeah, basically, you get 
an um, an IB Light license for all platforms in all versions. For IB to go, which adds um, encryption and a few other features, and also bigger, bigger size, and and so forth. Um, this is available for mobile platforms, iOS and Android, as a free B to enterprise and architect customers. Uh, there is a BOGO-like mechanism. You need you need to uh, I mean go to a page, enter your license key, and you get a license key and, and a file to deploy. IB to go with your applications. And then can you get an IB to go license separately from Red Studio license as well? Well, you can buy an IB to go license. They are they are sold. Um so that that's certainly an option. Um so they can find the link to the web page excuse me, with their uh, purchase? Is that how it works? Yeah, I think I'd be to go, I mean, if you go to the Interbase page, there is, there, is a, there is a store page and you can technically go there, buy a license, pay your credit card. Uh, unless you need one single license, I recommend talking with someone in sales because if you need more than one, you can probably get a better deal than, than buying directly from the, from the store. Mm -hmm. So there's a comment here about what versions of Linux we're supporting with 11.1. Uh, .1. It's it's the works with the latest uh, LTS, right? Uh, 22, I believe. Um, yeah, I don't remember for sure. I don't think we really changed it much compared to 11.0. That's the only platform we didn't add like a new version for because we did throw out all of the others. Oh, I've tested it on 20.04. Is 22 the new LTS? I thought 20 was the LTS. Um, I think we support 20, yeah. Yeah, 20. I, mean, I don't think 22 is the LTS. Okay, so someone is saying 20.4, which is the LTS, is the current supported. Okay, yeah. And, so I have Ubuntu, support... and then we support right at, I think, level eight, uh, yep. if I remember. Uh, Steven, your link you sent is only to organizers in the chat. Uh, so I'm going to put a link in the chat here. I did a uh, a script that I posted on GitHub Gist for setting up Ubuntu 20.04 and the latest Red Hat as well. That just automates the whole process of setting up for development. And I've tested it both on uh, WSL and on a virtual machine. Does F1 now work in the code editor to bring up help? I think I did that just recently. Uh, does anybody? Marco or David, are you, have you tried that? As far as I know, it wasn't working. As far as I know, uh, it wasn't not dude, working. I, I think that was actually a fix that we added in 11.0, not 11.1. Uh, so um, even if you don't test it, I'll test it out there. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, I, can, I can answer, I, I saw a couple of, I mean, common, commonly repeated question primarily on the compatibility. So 11.1 is an update to uh, 11. Uh, we've moved to like using two digit to one digit. So I, I know it's a bit confusing. So it's like moving from 10 for one to 10 for two. Um, that means that DCU files, uh, BPL files, and any um, binary that was built with Delphi, it is really a Delphi issue more than C++ side. Any binary built with Delphi is compatible with um, between 11.0 and 11.1. So if you built a package or bought a package or downloaded a package with, with a binary for 11.0, it should equally work on 11.1. So if you have already third-party components installed for 11.0, when you uninstall, reinstall, you should be able to find them there working all in place and, 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 and no no specific worry. Now there's a slight exception for packages that are downloaded via Gatit because Gatit doesn't reinstall the packages you had installed. It's something we made an attempt and it wasn't working great. So we we are we are pulling it for we're we're going to have it in the next next update um, most likely. So yeah, for, for the Gatit package, you need to install that, but it's also quite easy because you just go, I mean, click, 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 and, and, and they, they get back up in, in, in place. It, it should be working, I know, but, but it's not there. But for any third party 
package with a separate installation and it should be it should be should be really straightforward now if you manually uninstall um, and then you manually install uh, the registry configuration in that thing gets lost unless you use the migration wizard to make a copy and then restore it if you use 11.1 installer at the very beginning it will prompt you to get a copy of your registry settings and apply them again and in that case with that model so running 11.1 installation and um, when it prompts about uninstalling keeping the, the registry setting then you should have everything um, in place uh, smoothly without without any extra hiccup. Yeah, it's it's always a good sorry, idea to have a comment on that. I'm sorry, Jim, go ahead and then. After I was you. just going to say it's, it's always a good idea to have a backup, and I'm not always as good as I, I should be, but you know, back up your settings with the settings migration tool is a great idea before doing anything. Um, if you don't have some other backup solution, go ahead, David. Uh, thanks. So Marco was talking about um, you know, package compatibility and DCU compatibility and so forth in, in Delphi. Um, and as he mentioned, 11.0 and 11.1 are, are compatible. Um, now for C++, uh, we often break compatibility even in minor releases, unlike Delphi, and we have done that this release. And that means that if you have C++ code from 11.0, you should recompile that in 11.1 rather than just directly linking to it. You know, so if, if you have a static library, a .lib, for example, built with 11.0, rebuild that in 11.1. Um, if you don't do that, you'll, you'll you'll get a bunch of linking errors and it'll be very clear something is wrong. Um, one of the main reasons for that is a whole bunch of the uh, improvements we've done in C++ this release uh, in the RTL. Um, there's a huge variety, and I was just pulling up a list in the background, and I can go through that later if you want, um, although I think it was in the presentation. But even things like the you know, the layout in memory, which um, you know, the, the, the alignment has changed and um, a whole bunch of other RTL things have, have changed and are hugely improved, uh, but of course it's no longer compatible. Uh, so it's pretty straightforward just, just recompile um, in, in C++. Uh, there's a question here about the LL debugger changes, if that improves the performance of conditional breakpoints. That's one of the things that was improved by that. Uh, I'm not sure which platform that was for, but assuming it's for Windows 64-bit, um, possibly we've we've done quite a few bits of individual work in all sorts of areas uh, in, in LLDB this release. Um, I think the best thing there is to send me a, a specific test case, um, but yeah, we, we have done quite a bit of work around evaluation and you know those those kind of areas. Uh, so there is, I, I think I put the link, I'll put it in here again for the doc wiki, what's new. Does it have the list down at the bottom of uh, fixed, what's fixed, new and fixed? Yes, it does. All right, so I'll put that in there yeah, as well. Yeah. So, uh, if you're at, so if people ask if certain, a certain issue is fixed or whatever, the best way to find out is to uh, get the quality portal number and check against that list or check in quality portal and that will tell you if you do not have a quality portal number then uh search quality portal and if it's not there create an issue so that um because there's a lot i mean if you look at the list of fixes there's a lot of them there and none of us have that memorized although marco and david often do a better job at remembering things that i <laughs> i'm frequently impressed they'll like mention something and like, oh yeah yeah we fixed that i'm like oh, oh wow okay <laughs> i don't know how you put that in your head but um uh, so what version, the T Edge browser, what version of the web view does that support and does it support deletion of the user data folder? I don't remember the number of the version we, 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 we support. I think we updated it, but it's not the latest. It's, it's really difficult to keep up with Microsoft continuous releases. Um, now, in general, they are highly compatible so you can get a newer version but you might not have the apis readily available through our i mean the new apis readily available through our components because we need to refresh the the apis that we ship with uh, with the product um 
so I, I don't know about this specific specific thing. I know we had support for customizing the folder and a few other things after the original the original project. Um, we plan to keep updating it and adding features as Microsoft adds features, uh, but we, th there is uh, in general a, a, a little lag. We started early and released it very early, actually too early, so Microsoft broke it completely. So we, we also need to use some caution there. Uh, let's see. So um, does Delphi 11.1 .1 define version 3.6.0 as the compiler version, or does it keep 3.5.0 from version 11? So that would be, it's the same version, right? It is the same version. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Now, if for any reason, uh, that's mostly for someone writing libraries, uh, if for any reason you need to have a if def or something differentiating between 11.0 and 11.0, there is an RTL constant you can use instead that's going to tell you if this is being built on 11.1 versus 11.0. But the compiler's <laughs> flag, the compiler setting is the same. What's the RTL constant? I didn't know. Uh, that. I need to find it. <laughs> I don't remember that. Unless David has it in mind. You're just bragging about your vast um, knowledge. Like system RTL version um, or an angry similar to that. All right. Now I got to go look it up. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, oh, the T REST client, does it have the ability to load a select certificate using a file? I, I would need to look it up, sorry. Okay. I know we made some improvement in that space. I don't remember that specific feature being added, so probably no, but uh, yeah, I'm not certain. Has there been any improvements around the FireDAC PostgreSQL support Babelfish in 11.1? Um, no, I don't. I don't think we specifically looked into it. Um, so Robert, put a quality portal, uh, please, uh, request in there for that. Uh, Uh, there's still some questions about uh, uninstall, reinstall. So it, if you, when you install 11.1, .1, it will pop up and say, hey, you already have 11 installed. Do you want to remove it from the registry? The default's no. Just leave it at no. And the next screen will say, do you want to uninstall 11? And you say yes. And then it will do that. And then it'll install 11.1 .1 .1 and migrate your settings. Uh, can't access the con platform configuration box from 11.1. Uh, odd, it worked for me. Um, it, it, yeah, you can run the installer again, I believe, uh, if you need to change it as well. Uh, the doc wiki helps us. Uh, so the doc wiki is online right now. I know that's something they're working on. I think they're actually looking at migrating it to a different platform, but it is currently working. Um, you can download it. If, well, you can download the help offline. If you go to docs.embarcadero.com, you can download it from there. Uh, LSP supporting Visual Studio Code. Um, is there a special plugin for Visual Studio Code we need? And is that available? Uh, David, can you... Uh, explain how that works? Uh, yes, there is, and we actually made it available for 11.0 or, or the release before, I think 11.0. Um, so yes, if you go to the Visual Studio Marketplace, um, search for Dolphin LSP, you'll find a, uh, a plugin uh, available there, just, just install it. As long as you have Dolphin installed on the same machine, uh, you should be able to use it straight from Visual Studio Code. Yeah, it's pretty slick actually. It, it, although I guess we need now need to add an ultra edit integration, but it doesn't have an LSP yet, but eventually. Uh, do you have any, there's a few questions about roadmap, like specifically around the AWS SDK. Um, is there a new update to that coming out soon or when can people look forward to uh, that, Marco? 
Yeah, in terms of the AWS SDK, we're expecting a new release either towards the end of this month or early next month. Uh, it adds, it's going to add a lot of new um, API, um, Amazon APIs, and, and round up some of the some of the uh, APIs available in the first um, preview release from last December. And it will be made available on GetIt for enterprise and architect customers um, as as a free download. So Ken's asking how to have the large icons in the uh, 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 up the palette, and I don't remember the settings offhand, but I will show. I'll look it up real quick while we're going through here. Um, you right click in the palette, and then you should be able to get to the settings. Um, I can't yeah. remember the name of the item, but but it is just just right click there, and you should be able to get them. Yeah, it, it's something like um, you turn off the caption. On Earth, and then you say large icons, and then it does that uh, horizontal thing, which I thought looked a lot better for. So I tried to drag my Delphi to the monitor and lost it. There it is. It's interesting. So I will, the, the uh, running a computer with dual monitors and one being high DPI, um, it's interesting how nothing seems to work properly. Delphi probably works better than a lot of the other ones, but yeah, uh, some of the other software. I tried moving uh, go to webinar and it totally lost it. Okay, um, it's better, Jim, because actually there was another thing we did a lot of work on. Eleven point one was um, you know support for shifting DPIs and that kind of thing. You should be able to have something like coded at a window and drag it back and forth between two monitors with different DPIs, and you know it'll just work. Um, yeah, yeah. I thought I thought it, I I do think it works better now. But uh, yeah, like well, it's, it seems like nothing else works. <laughs> I'm glad I have my DPI monitor, but uh, some software is that this that per monitor v2 right that doesn't know it can't tell which monitor it's on on some other software. Anyway, uh, v2 is one we support, and that's the one that has full support for everything. Like it, it understands exactly which monitor it's on per window in the application. And so that's what the ID supports and what your VCL apps will support if you if you turn that on. So oh, David, there's a question here from Michael. He says, already installed yesterday, looks good. Um, but for C code completion, it shows template items, but not properties methods. It, um, is that a new file, existing file, so long as it's on disk? Um, I'm not sure I understand the question, honestly. Does that? Uh, yeah, look, most most likely that's issues. So, um, I mean, as as Mark recovered, we we did a lot of work uh, on C plus plus code completion this release. Um, there are a reasonable number of issues we we identified, um, and we we focused on the ones that that have the biggest impact. Um, you know, for example, like speed. So, I I think Marco noted that um, you. Know, one of the reasons people thought it wasn't working before was because it might have taken, you know, let's say 30 seconds to display results, which you know you wouldn't wait for. And, and now that 30 seconds is, is down to, to a couple of seconds or, or less. Um, but among those issues that you know, we, we had to triage which ones we, we really wanted to fix. One of the issues is that uh, a file has to have a file name that's actually on disk for completion to work. So if you just create a brand new VCL app, um, none of those files exist on disk, and so completion won't work until you save. Now it's important to note that when you have a file on disk, it can be modified in the IDE. Um, you, know, you don't have to save to, to update the, the code completion engine. Um, all that matters is that there is a file with the same file name on disk um, in order for, for, for code completion to work currently. Um, the reasons for that are deep inside cQuery and are related to outcomes from a Unix origin and how it needs a, a file identifier you know, and, and an inode effectively. i um, going to wave my hands and, and not get into it. Um, but we focus more on you know, the, the vast majority of cases you open a project and all your files already exist on disk. Um, and that's the, the scenario that we, we optimized and, and fixed. Um, so file new VCL app, you will need to save first. And just to be clear, you can modify in the IDE to your heart's content. You know, you don't have to have the same contents on disk as in the IDE. It's just that there has to be a, a file name that that is there in the in the file system. So that's my guess as to what what you're seeing there. 
So th thank you, David. The question about the large icons, um, this is actually 11.0 because uh, I'm reinstalling the 11.1 install on the virtual machine. But if you uh, turn off show button captions, go to large. So if you just right click in here, go to properties, user interface, palette, large, turn off show button captions, and then turn off auto collapse if you want to have them always visible and visible like that. But anyway. I know Ray Kanopka always had that, and I thought it was some cool plugin he wrote. And maybe it was originally, I don't know, but I, I think it looks a lot nicer. It, it's uh, yeah. Uh, Marco, is a comment here about remote desktop currently taking minutes to reload? Is this fixed? I know there's a lot of work around the terminal services. Is that is that fix that? Well, I can't tell about the specific issue. I know that we did we did some work there, uh, both at the VCI level and at the ID level. Um, but yeah, I, I don't. We, we should look up the specific bug and um, and check the status. Uh, David, there's a comment here that says, I found that Project Clean does not remove PCH files, which can solve linker problems sometimes. Is that, should it? Is that a bug? Any suggestions, comments? Uh, most likely it should not. If this is in the project root, so you have a PCH file uh, with the same name as the project file name sitting next to the project, uh, that, that should always exist as part of the project setup. Um, if you're looking at something related to the pre-compiled header that's you know build artifact, then clean should get rid of that, yes, um, because that's that's what cleaning should do. Um, I think the best thing there would be to drop me an email um, or, or put in a QP or something. We can we can have a look at it. Um do do do. Uh, what about the 64-bit linker would not need to set heap sizes manually? Um, uh, David? <laughs> I, can, I can answer that one as well. Um, yes, yeah, so that's that's referring to when the, the linker can be um, you know, quite stressed with its, its memory allocations, uh, depending on, on what it's linking. Um, and the workarounds currently are to... Um, you know, look at the error messages, you know, run, run it in for both mode to get a lot of information, uh, look at the output there and um, you know, do some manual configuration. Uh, there are settings in the in the project options. You can sort of adjust what the linker does based on your specific project and the, um, the verbose output there. And the question is, you know, when, when will this no longer be necessary? Um, look, I, I can't specifically answer that because it's talking about future plans that we can't discuss, um, but I can say we're very aware of linker problems and really want to solve it, um, which I know is not you know, quite the answer as as specific as you want to hear, but I can definitely assure you it's something that we uh, yeah, really want to, to solve. Another question for you, David, around the welcome page. It says in 11.0, the, the welcome page would take up 20 to 30 seconds to load. And I believe that was get it, but the get it caching now should improve the welcome page. It seems to load faster for me, but you actually have quite a few optimizations there. Um, GetUp was one of them. Others were just you know, various optimizations. Pardon me, optimizations that we that we did. Um, yes, it should be a lot faster to to load now. By the way, I think the new welcome page is really worth checking out. Um, uh, you know, there's a comment there about your know, welcome page backgrounds and you know that kind of thing. But really, I think the cool thing in this release are the the custom plugin support, which which you showed, Jim. Um, you can write anything you want that, that will plug in there, and um, we've we've made available you know all, all, all the same APIs that we use. Um, so our our frames shown in the welcome page are the uh, you know use the same APIs that that you can use. Yeah, I had so, fun um, working on those. Sorry, I had fun working with those plugins, and they were pretty simple. That the, the to-do box actually uses an interbase database and and connects to it. I didn't completely finish it. I don't think I can add items through the through the, the UI yet. But uh, it, it it was it was cool. It was fun to play with, and uh, it worked. It was a lot quicker than I expected it to be. Honestly, getting those put together. Yeah, well, something there. I mean. Don't really want to sort of distract from the, the general view of 11.1, but when I mention the same APIs, um, we actually have 
you know, multiple sets of how, how powerful it can be. So you can just have a frame and it can be a completely empty frame and you can put anything you want in there. But we also make available um, the same UE framework that we use through a sort of, you know, we, we have a you know, UE and data logic layer, uh, you know, which is, is, is you know, hopefully rather well architected. And we actually expose that through the tools API. So if you want, you can use the same UE that we do, the same presentation without actually writing any UE code, um, which I think is probably what you did, Jim, for the, the to-do list. So um, yes, yes. Yeah, a whole heap of different levels of stuff you can do and uh, levels of customization you can do right from, um, you know, right up to something fully custom, uh, but also it's very easy to make something that's, that fits in perfectly with, uh, with what's free build. Um, so the questions here about C++ uh, builders support for various C++ standards and, um, and I know we can't really talk about like future release plans, but, um, I know that's something you're looking at, David, I don't know if you want to comment about that or. Yeah, the problem with you know, things like this is that we, we, we can't talk about future release plans very much. Um, but I can say that we strongly desire to you know, support the newer versions of C++, um, uh, as well as, you know, I mean, C++ uh, includes both your know, language features and, and library features in, in the STL. Um, and I saw some other questions as well, which I'll roll into this answer about things like std optional and variant and other things in the STL. Um, all of those are things that we want to update. Um, now, like I said, I, I, I can't, talk specifics and I'm really sorry about that, but I can assure you it's definitely on our um, on our priority and, and, and attention list. Yeah, I see some comments here about ARM Linux as well. Um, and I, I know, again, we can't address that specifically, but I noticed Marco said that um, ARM or Apple's leading the way for ARM focus on the desktop or something along those lines. <laughs> I know that that's something I would love to see as well. I don't know if you would elaborate on that at all, Marco, or at least say that it is something we're interested in. It is something we're interested in, along with um, the other desktop platform that is inching towards ARM, which is Windows. And so these are on the table for future consideration. There's nothing really that we can announce at this time. Yeah. Uh, so there's a comment here, and I'm not sure, there's a few comments here that I don't have enough information, and I apologize, I can't answer them better, we can't answer them better, but there's one here a uh, list of breaking changes. As far as I know, there's no breaking changes from 11.0 to 11.1, except for, as David mentioned, you need to rebuild your C++ packages. Um, is there any, so I guess, Andreas, maybe there's a certain version you're coming from, but generally speaking, there's very few breaking changes moving from version to version. Uh, he's asking about T stream copy from removing the T form old create order. So yeah, I'm not sure what version you're coming from. Do we do we have that on the doc wiki someplace maybe or like each version what breaks? All right. We generally have release notes and what's new that listed, but it's from one version to the next one. We don't have like an overall list of, of what changed across different versions. Okay, that's true. Good point. So note there, um, I mean, Marco, one of those things was old create order, and I, I think there were a couple of others that from memory, and I, I, I know it's really a question for you, but I, from memory, I think those were things that changed in 11.0. So if you look at the 11.0 release notes, that, that should cover those those specific items. Um, correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong there, sorry. Um, Firebase, so there, we added Firebase support recently. Has that been improved? as well uh, what are um anything about firebase i, no, I saw how about firebird got confused for a second there too yeah no we have improved the behavior of the core features we haven't added additional features firebase is like a huge it's a huge set of of um, of services uh, that the google provides so we only have a handful and we haven't extended in terms of adding more features but i know we fixed a few issues related with with
All right, so somebody apparently is still confused about uninstall installing 11.1 over 11.0. So, Marco, correct me if I'm wrong, but you run, if you have 11.0 installed, you run the 11.1 installation and it will pop up and say, you have 11.0 installed, do you want to remove the registry settings? And you say no. And then it says uninstalling 11 and you say, okay. And then it says installing 11.1. So you don't have to go manually uninstall it. You just run the installer. Does that sound right? Yeah, that is the way to automatically get your registry settings preserved. Um, the alternative option, which is still suggested anyway, that before you do anything, you just make a copy using the migration wizard. You can do you copy your settings to an XML file. So you can eventually reapply them or selectively reapply some of them uh, as needed to, to your registry. But um, yeah, but the recommendation is to follow the the, the process of uh, running the 11.1 installer, so you can have a smoother experience. Just just to be clear there with those options. So um, when when I hear explanation about options with something like installing, I always worry. I think, oh, am I going to do the right thing? Am I going to select the right options? That kind of thing. And I really understand questions like this um, because I I ask the same questions about other software. Um, the options Jim are mentioning are the default. So just run the app and just keep on clicking next. Um, it'll it'll be fine. Um, we've we, we've made very sure to make sure that the the default settings are the uh, the right ones. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Good point. It, yeah, I, I I worry about this kind of thing as well. You know, we, we we all do, and we want to make it straightforward. And I I really understand it. It can be concerning, but yeah, we. We try to make sure that um, you know, it does does the right thing by default. I, I'm the kind of person when I install things, I'm always like advanced options, expanding all the things, poking at it, and like, what does this do? And uh, unfortunately, I usually break things doing that. But <laughs> as David said, it is the default options when you install it, it will do that for you. But uh, it is a good idea to back up beforehand. That's always a good idea. Um, <laughs> um, Okay, so David, here's a comment here about Jom Tech. It says the developer of the Twine compiler. Do developers get access? Okay, so is there a Twine compiler for 11.1 coming? Oh yes, absolutely. Um, we think Twine compilers is awesome, so it's available for free with your updates. Uh, updates up. Um, now I need to check if it's in get it quite yet, but if it isn't, it'll be coming you know, any moment. Um, so yes, it's it's it definitely will will be there. Great. Okay. Uh, what client databases to use for Windows Store applications that are secure and don't cost extra for each download? Now, um, if you have an I may be even correct, but maybe our Marco or you or David know. If you have the enterprise edition of Rad Studio, doesn't that include uh, interbase licenses, or does that only include interbase licenses via uh, Rad the server? Oh, so Stephen just messaged me. Uh, I, interbase to go is mobile only, so it's not included. Okay, so that's what it is. Interbase to yeah, go is so, included. In the yeah, not we include IB Lite, which is the light version of Interbase. We include IB to go for mobile in the enterprise editions. We include some licenses for Rod Server, the Rod Server Lite, which is included, and one license of the full Rod Server or more if you're an architect. There is no Interbase, I mean, Interbase server, available as part of the installation outside of the developer edition, which is free for everyone to, to, to build software with, with the database, but not for, for deployment in, in production. I know it's a bit confusing, sorry. <laughs> um, so the SQL Lite, the new SQLite encryption extension would, excuse me, support encryption, but it's SQLite's kind of halfway database. <laughs> um, well, yeah, I mean, be, besides but that's a separate license. A SQLite too. within uh, interface could, could could be a better option, but that's separate. So SQLite originally had a hook 
that could be used to encrypt the data. Um, Fardak was using that hook and that remains available per se. However, a recent version of SQLite removed that hook. So going forward, Fardak is losing the ability to do the encryption, uh, unless you want to stay on an old unsecure version of SQLite, which is generally a bad idea. So if you want to stay current on, on the SQLite engine, um, you, you cannot keep using the old trick with Fardak providing the, the encryption. The alternative that is provided by SQLite is called SQLite encryption and whatever. Uh, SQLite EE. Um, this is a paid version of SQLite. It's not expensive, but it's a paid software. And that provides an even better encryption level built into the system, although the encryption is incompatible. So you can use a FARDAC encrypted SQLite database and open it with the SQLite SEC encryption, which is a different encryption logic and, and mechanism. So that is an option that we want to. Uh, make available to our customers because some customers for many reasons want to stay on SQLite but require encryption. Um, the alternative that we're kind of recommending is to consider Interbase which in many scenarios could be uh, the embedded version of Interbase in many scenarios could be cheaper and easier and more integrated than, uh, than SQLite. But both options are available. Now notice that we do not ship the SQLite libraries that would not be legal. We ship a script that you can use to build the libraries, provided you have a Delphi compatible C compiler that's called C Builder. So you need to have either a C Builder license or a Rust Studio license to be able to take the source code that SQL is going to provide you and build it in a way that can be linked into uh, a Delphi application because. SQLite only allows uh, linking of the binary. You cannot distribute a DLL with uh, with uh, SQLite security encryption. Uh, th so there is a question about the feature matrix comparing C++ Builder and Delphi that is on the uh, on the product. I a page or a feature matrix you can download there's a simplified one but then there's a download that's like a a multi-page pdf that goes into a lot of detail uh what about moving from vcl to fire monkey i want to move my vcl to fire monkey but have a hard time understanding mechanism differences example canvas drawing etc um marco you want to address that yeah I, I do have a couple of recommendations there are there are many similarities um kind of at the outside, I mean, you have buttons and edits and components and so forth, but the internal differences are very significant. So my recommendation is to read some good documentation about um, FireMonkey and its architecture. Uh, there are books that that are around, available. There, are, there is content. Uh, Andrea Mani book on 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 FireMonkey is a good one. I, I mentioned it because I read it, and I, I don't know about others, but I'm sure there are others that are equally good. Uh, because you, you really need to understand the architecture, what, what is a style, how a component behaves, and so forth, if you want to do professional development on, on FireMonkey. The other thing, if you have an existing application that you want to migrate and you don't want to do the annoying work of, well, taking a button, creating a button, I, I mean, adding an edit where there was an edit, I can recommend Mida. It's a conversion tool that would take your VCL application and convert most of it to an equivalent FireMonkey, FireMonkey form. It doesn't convert everything, of course, but it does a relatively good job. And for the price, which is relatively cheap, it's going, it's going to save you a lot of time with doing like manual manual like copying of, of components, configurations, and things like that. So th these are two recommendations. Uh, there, there are others, of course. Yeah, um, Mita or Mita, that I can't, I don't know if I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. I, I've heard good things about that too. I think Delphi Parser might have some in there, but. Um, it might be, yeah. Um, there's a comment here about the IoT components in 11. I 
I'm not sure were those in Git. They were in Git it before, but I think are they all bundled into a single download or were they removed completely? Do you know, Marco? No, they're currently not available. They they have not been updated in quite some time, and so they were not providing a very high value. For that reason, we decided not to publish them. Um, if there is request, just write myself or David or, or someone, and we can consider how to make those uh, available. But right now, they were not. Um, yeah, they were. They are re being removed from the product feature per se because the. We were not. We've decided not to further invest on those components. Um, someone joined late. Apparently, didn't realize the daylight savings time change just recently here was in the U.S. That's probably thrown some people off. Uh, I, I daylight savings time drives me bonkers. Uh, I hear talk about Python. I use Python sometimes. Are there any possibilities to mix Python and C++? David. Oh, yes, very much. I mean, uh, the same technology that works with Delphi should work with C++ Builder. Um, so you, know, you, can, you can directly use that. Um, but there are also other bindings available for C++. One of them is in Boost. Uh, although the boost support is currently built with Python 2, um, not, not Python 3. Uh, but yeah, there, there are plenty of things out there for, for C++. I think probably the most straightforward um, for C++ builder customers is to use the, uh, you know, the same um, support that we've been talking about for, for Delphi. Uh, C++... Oh, the constant stuff on Linky posted that the constant is RTTL version 11. Um, so there's a few comments here about um, a community edition and Parnassus and a few other things. Uh, those are coming. Uh, community edition is coming, is planned for uh, later in the release cycle, we're, we're staggering the releases so it doesn't come out at the same time as the main, the main, the pro and enterprise. But it is planned to be updates, not been abandoned. But yeah, those are things still working. Uh, Code Rage. So last year we did Delphi Con instead of Code Rage. I'm not sure if we're going to do uh, language specific ones or if a big Code Rage this year. The idea of Delphi Con was instead of having two tracks going simultaneously, we would do one track each at different times that's easier or less stressful for me in theory <laughs> uh yeah we're not sure we'll, there will certainly be something this year though jim i can probably give a slightly longer comment on the panesis plugins you know bookmarks and navigator and the parallel debugger because we have got quite a few questions on them mm -hmm. um and it's really nice to see the the interest there um you know, when when eleven point zero came around, we you know, changed build systems. We were integrating them properly into the build. Um, I can't go into details, but you know, it took longer than than expected. Um, but we are targeting eleven point one there, so they, they they should come soon. Um, you know, I, I I do regret. I'm sure we will do that. They weren't available for eleven point zero, but but stay tuned. Um, they'll be there for for eleven point one. Okay. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Um, uh, there's also comments about roadmap, and I, I don't think we don't have an updated roadmap, or at least not recently updated. I think the roadmap that was updated, I think we're probably at the end of that now. Um, I don't think we're planning on updating the roadmap again. Marco, do you want to? No, this is, not current, this is not currently expected. There is um, in the keynote that we did for Delphicon in November, there was a discussion about plans, not an official roadmap. And that is the most up-to-date information that um, is available. Okay. I, I do have a hard stop in a few minutes because we're already 20 something minutes late. Oh, wow, yeah. Um, and we do have, so there will be a replay for this as well. And 
uh, different additional Linux distributions. So I've tested on a number of Linux distributions and generally if you have the right packages installed, um, which varies from distribution to distribution, how you install packages and what packages are pre-installed, uh, then it does work on, on most any distribution I've tried. I even tried like some obscure ones like Puppy Linux, but I haven't tried, I'm not sure if I tried Alpine. I may have tried Alpine, I think it did work, but I don't remember. Um, are there, SQL for RAD server would be great. I'm not sure what that, well, oh, Microsoft SQL for RAD server. Uh, uh, I'm not sure what, RAD, see, uh, Marco, can you comment on that? Microsoft SQL for RAD server, is there, it works as any database, I believe, doesn't it? Well, there are two sides of it. It works, you can use any database for your business data, but you do need to have interbase, which by the way, it's included, so you don't you need a license to store the core data for for RAD server itself, like the user, the account, some of the configuration settings and so forth. We've been discussing whether we wanted to open it up so you can use any database, but that adds quite a bit of, of effort. So we're not certain we're going to go in that direction. But for your business data, company data, you can use any database. I mean, any FIDA connection or even a, a non-FIDA connection. I mean, just any any Delphi database connection is going to work fine. It's only for the internal storage of configuration setting and so forth that an uh, interface is needed. So, um... David, maybe I'm not sure if this is something that you can address or not. It says it's David saying that there's a lot of new Delphi books come out recently. It's really easy to find them, and it's really easy to find C++ books, but not C++ builder books. Um, uh, that's comments? true. I, I think there is actually quite a lot of new material. Um, obviously not as much as Delphi, but um, you know there is there is some. Um, I'd need to go look that up, but I think we even have a web page with uh resources there but i'll need to look that up um, but to a certain extent that's true um there isn't as much um it'd be great if you want to, to write something but uh, to another extent there is there is definitely new new material coming out uh yeah i will certainly i i, I can talk to mvps and see if any of them want to write a book and if they do we can do our best to support them i'm always happy to support mvp projects like that but yeah, there could certainly be could be more. Could be more. Um, any new native components for Android? That's not well. When was the last time we added native components for Android in ten three? Was it Marco? Have we added any new ones recently? You're muted. No, nothing recent. Uh, okay. Um. Okay. I am not to the end of the questions. I'm doing my best. And I know Stephen Balls is back there tapping questions too. I will uh, share the question log with uh, product management though. And uh, uh, generally speaking though, I mean, you can certainly contact product management if you have questions and support. So if there's a certain bug, it's go to quality portal and submit a bug there. That's, that's the best way to get that done. I've been guilty before of going to David or Marco and saying, hey, when's this going to be fixed? And they're like, I've never heard that before. And oh, sure enough, no one's reported it yet. So, uh, that is the best way to get things fixed. And that's what I do now when I have uh, bugs I encounter. Um, gosh. It, it, anything that I missed that you want to address, David? I know you guys are seeing some questions, scroll by and answering some of them too. David, do you want to add anything here? Yeah, look, there are a lot, and as always, thank you for that. Um, during the webinar itself, I was, you know, answering quite a few, but, you know, during the Q&A, you just see me sort of hunched over the keyboard, so I'm, I'm not doing that, although I'm very grateful to other staff, including Stephen, for, for continuing to answer in, in the background. Um, I know Marco at least has a hard, I'm hard stop in, in a few minutes, and I, I probably should as well. Um, I thought perhaps, you know, we've talked a lot about stuff, but I thought I might just mention one favourite feature as a as an answer to that, um, you know, we talked a lot about quality and C++ code completion performance and that kind of thing this release, which is really important. Um, but something that I don't think got quite as much attention, but that you might find cool, 
um, are the intrinsics support that we added this release in C++ Builder. Um, so that means that you can write code using the claim intrinsics for, let's say, AVX or um, SSC4 or, or something like that. Um, and uh, you know the libraries out there, including in, in Get It, um, that, that make that easy. But you can also you know, use those directly. Um, going along with that, you know that that was one of the reasons why we changed some of the layout in the RTL as well. So things are, are 16 byte aligned um, by default. Hand waving there, um, you know some globals might not be, for example, but you know in, anything you dynamically allocate in C++ uh, should be. Um, so that's 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 rather cool. It's something that um, you know we haven't really focused on because it's not you know, important per se compared to things like co-completion performance, which we know is really important and we're really focused on this release. But that I think is cool, um, you know, because it allows you to write code with with much higher performance. Um, so I, I think that's my answer out of I don't know 500 questions or, or however many we have. Um, you know, just want to talk about. You know, as, as well as the, the stuff we've really focused on, something that, that is you know, cool, but we haven't really focused on, um, I think is probably the, the best answer there. Great, thank you. Uh, now, I'm sorry, I was trying to answer questions. You, you say you don't have a hard stop, so you can keep keep going for a little bit? Is that what you're saying? Or uh, I should stop fairly soon, um, okay. but absolutely, yeah. if, we, if we need to keep going and there are lots of questions, I can a few moments. All right. Yes. Marco, you, you'd have a hard stop. So anything you want to add before we go? Um... Uh, no, nothing in particular. I, I'm, I'm very pleased about this release. It adds a lot of quality to, to the great features we added in 11.0. And it's, it's, it's really smooth to use. I mean, I've been playing with it on my, my 4K monitor and the smaller monitor on the side. Um, 11.0 is a bit tricky to, 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 to use switching monitors and, and, and readjusting to the sizes. 11.1 uh, is way, way, way better. And uh, that, that's, that's alone is, is worth moving, moving up to it. Uh, but there is a lot in the product that is really relevant, change improved compared to uh, 11.0 and of course compared to 10.4 and, and older versions. I mean, I was, was using 11 and, and 10 at the same, and 10.4 at the same time. And boy, I mean, 10.4 really looks, I mean, the fonts are, are hard to, look at. I mean, they're so, so um, uh, yeah, I mean, they render with, 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 with very low quality because they are, they are, they are resized on, on my 4K monitor. Um, 11 is, is so much better there. There's a few people asking about fast report, not working with 11. Um, they list 11 on the website. You'd have to talk to fast reports. I'm not sure. I'm not aware of any issues until today. This is the first time I've heard anything about it. No, we've, we've seen a few issues popping up. I'm not certain about the status, though. Um, there, although I went to their website, there's a little box pops that says, hey, message us if you have questions. So I guess go ask them. I, I, I don't know. So, OK. Um, Okay, let's see. Uh, any so there's a few um, comment here about horse putting it on get it. We certainly could put include horse, which is a uh, uh, open source package on get it. If there's there, I think there's on the um, get it now. There's a link on how to submit things for get it there. Um, uh, Twine compiler is so good, shouldn't it be integrated by default instead of being supplied as an add-on? You know, I have mixed feelings about that. I, I think I like, personally, I like the option of being able to configure, you know, add and remove features individually, but sometimes, yeah, some things it would be nice if they were just built in. Um, I don't know, is, is that something that been considered, David, or is that something that we like keeping it separate, or what's your, any thoughts on that? Um, look, unfortunately, that kind of topic is the kind of thing that we can't really discuss. Um, I just kind of say that we really value Twine Compiler. I think it's awesome. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. Okay. I, I find that, you know, putting my developer hat on, I, I would really like, you know, some of these topics with, with other answers to that, but I'm sure you understand there are some things that we just can't publicly discuss. Yeah. Especially, actually, those, that's a, a real good example of something because that has, like, yeah, <laughs> something we can't just answer right away. Um, 
Uh, oh, I lost my question. I resized my window. Okay, I really need to go. Uh, thanks okay. a lot for attending, and um, I'll let you continue alongside. Bye bye. Okay. Bye. Thanks, Marco. Go. Um. Oh gosh, it was a good question. Oh, there it is. Um, whole tomato visual assist. Is that something that's still we had something we previously had put on the roadmap? Is that something we're still working towards? Um, uh, yes. yes, it definitely is. No, we, we we definitely want to integrate that into C++ Builder. And again, this goes on the topic of things we can't necessarily talk too much about because we can't make future promises. Um, but I can say that you know, we, we really value Visual Assist and um, we think it'd be a great addition. So that's definitely something we uh, we, we want to add. Yeah, it, it is on the roadmap that has not, has not been uh, removed. Uh, so here's a good question. Actually, I noticed this. I was going to put a bug report in and I did not. So Kelly, if you could do that. On the installer, it says that you should use the web installer or the ISO installer if that's what you used last time, the same installer. David, that doesn't matter anymore, does it? Isn't it the same in underlying technology now either way, right? I think so. Now, to be perfectly honest, to answer this correctly, I'll need to double check with uh, the person who looks after the installer, um, uh, which is Marco and, and a couple of engineers. Um, but yes, we, we in the past, the web installer and the ISO installer used different installer technologies. And so that was the reason why we said use the same one. Uh, now the web install and the ISO install are the same installer and you simply point it to an offline resource or, or the online one and you can just toggle that on the command line uh, that's documented in, in the help. So I believe that it shouldn't matter. You should just run. I mean, definitely the installer is the same installer. Just run the installer. Um, and yes, it should pick up uh, correctly whether you're installing from a, you know, from an ISO, from, from a DVD or, or, you know, or not. So someone's reporting that they're 11.1, they're getting some false positives from their virus scanners. Uh, that happens, you can, depending on, it depends from virus scanner to virus scanner, but it could be a result of the fact that it's a newer uh, signature than it's been seen before. And that might be why it's uh, reporting that. I, I don't know um, why that would be, but that's not something, unfortunately we have much control over, but I think most of them you can report and say, hey, it's false positive. It looks like Stephen Ball had to drop off too. Uh, which high DPI designers are you using internally? Uh, I'm not sure if that's a reference to. I, I like the high DPI designers in the IDE. I, the if you don't have a high DPI yet monitored, man, upgrading to high DPI for things that work on it and look nice on it, oh, so nice. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I think the question is referring to which, which setting we use internally. Um, because currently the form designer allows you to design um, you're at, at 96 DPI or at a specific DPI or at whatever your monitor happens to be using. Um, and there are a few other questions in the question log I saw about changing this. Um, now we designed it that way you know, <laughs> after a lot of research. I mean, um, you know, we, we wanted to release a high DPI version of the ID for quite some time. Um, and the main thing there that we had to, to get right was the VCL form designer. Um, because of course, you know, with the VCL itself, it's, it's very straightforward uh, supporting IDPI. It was, it was the form designer that's, that's tricky. Um, and so the solution that we have allowing you to design at different DPIs uh, was, was the best solution that came out of our, our, our research there. Um, but there are some questions about whether we could take an alternative approach um, you know, where you can always design at 96 DPI, but sort of visually scale up um, or design at high DPI, but sort of restrict the uh, you know, values that are allowed to be entered so they can always scale down or, or something like that. Um, you have a lot of different proposals from people. Look, we are researching that kind of thing. Um, there is one new Windows API that's available now that was not available at the time we were doing the research and implementing 11.0. Um, so we are researching that. Um, I can't answer whether we'll take a different approach yet or not. Uh, not because of my usual caveat about future things, but simply because we're we're still researching. Um, but yeah, I, I can say that um, you know the 
the support we have right now works very well if you're using high DPI. And if you're across a team with different DPI settings, we recommend just picking one particular DPI that you design at. Um, you can all use different DPIs for your screens, uh, but just you know, make sure that all your ID options um, are set so the form designer uses the, the same DPI. Um, but we are researching other, other ways and who knows, maybe a, a future version will have a, a different system. By the way, my comment about backing up settings before upgrading, that's not just a Delphi Rad Studio. Uh, it's good advice for all your software. Uh, and if you haven't had that bite you yet, you will. <laughs> uh, I, I'm not 100% doing that, but it, it seems like more often than not, I or frequently I do have trouble with uh, with lots of software that doesn't migrate changes, uh, settings and stuff. So uh, even ones that try to do it right. Uh, so there's a few comments here about running, uh, not able to get their phone, people to get their phones detected under Windows for ARM. Um, oh, okay. Um, and I, 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 it could be a driver issue with your phone. I'm not sure on that one. Um, so Bjorn's saying that the docs.embarcadero.com, the help on there is still 11.0, not 11.1. That's, so, that's true. So um, yeah, in, the, the documentation should currently be up for 11 for, for Alexandra. Um, older versions are still being put up. Um, and uh, yes, I think that, um, I mean, I'll have to check, but yeah, I think the majority of it is 11.0 is, is at the moment. bitmap style designer i think there was a webinar on the bitmap style designer recently i'm not sure if we have anything in the doc wiki on that do you are you aware of any resources on bitmap style designer david um i think there are webinars um i will have to check on that i'm afraid um but i think you're right and we did do one recently I apologize for being so vague. There was so much to think about sometimes that <laughs> sometimes we can get to specifics of just, just vanishes. But um, yes, there's this yep. material there. Um, I, I also have to go in a few minutes. And I'm wondering if I can just scan through the questions myself and just pick out a few more things. Yes. Um, yes. I a couple. Like, there's a question here about not being able to move higher than 11.1 .1 and the question about 11.4. Um, I think that's a confusion between version numbers. Um, so we have changed our version numbering scheme, and I, I know this is going to add confusion. I apologize for that. Um, we changed because we went back to a more normal scheme. So hopefully it makes more sense from now on. Um, but the previous version, the major version was 10.4, and then we had 10.4.1, 10.4.2, and, and so forth. Now the major version is 11. You know, that's it, 11. Um, and so we have 11.0 and 11.1, .1, which is what we've just released. So we can't move higher than 11.1 .1 because there is nothing higher than 11.1 .1, uh, at the at the moment. Um, uh, and actually, was it 11.15? Um, is that something I can say anything about? Uh, I think the slides mentioned that. Um, yeah, we, we, we did a lot of stuff with uh, you know, a lot of improvements with um, uh, C++ code completion this release. We are looking into some further improvements. And if we can, you know, we, we don't want to wait for 11.2 to deliver those. So depending on, on what we do there, um, we may have a little mini C++ only release, which would be 11.1.5. And that would be C++ builder only, um, you know, not for, for Delphi there. Um, but that's still sort of in development and, and research. So um, I believe the slides did mention that, so it's okay to talk about. Um, but uh, yeah, that's that's in potential planning at the moment. I think the takeaway really is that 11.1 .1 has a lot of stuff for C++ code completion. So that's, that's what to install uh, if that's been troublesome for you right now. But Jim, there are quite a few other questions about the recording and replays and stuff. And um, yeah, I know this will go up on YouTube as, as usual uh, fairly soon. 
Yes. So my, my goal is to get it on YouTube today. Um, we'll see how that goes. Uh, the TURL stream there is, I just put a link in the doc from the doc wiki, the basics of it. I don't know if there is the libraries in there, but it is a bit, some basic syntax is in the, uh, the what's new page there. Uh, any components out there for fire monkey and game design? There are a few out there. I'm trying to think. I know there's some game engines for Delphi. I'm not sure if they use fire monkey or not. Although, um, if you haven't looked at Skia for Delphi, I think that would be a good way to go for game development. You can do the uh, Lodi, Lodi, I'm not sure the right pronunciation, which is a vector-based animation format, and you can use those with Skia for Delphi and it really fast rendering. So that might be a possibility. It's not a full game engine. There's so much involved in a game engine, but it would be... Uh, uh, So I'm just scanning, Jim. There are lots and lots of questions. Um, several more questions about sort of compatibility between 11 and 11.0 uh, and 11.1. And um, uh, yes, I mean for for Delphi, uh, it's it's a minor release update. So following our normal minor release rules, um, your know, packages and DCUs that were built with 11.0 are compatible with 11.1. Uh, so you should be able to build a component library, for example, with 11.0 and install it in, in, in 11.1. Um, for C++, we, we do ask that you rebuild your source code for, for, for 11.1. Um, yeah, we made a lot of RTO changes that are, are great improvements, but it does mean that you need to recompile C++ there. But for Delphi, it's you know, compatible. Yep, so, so George just put a link in for some FireMonkey Gaming a YouTube video. Um, a lot of people commenting actually that they're just installed this and it's working better and things are improved. And a couple people mentioned that the US Senate apparently just passed a bill to make daylight savings time year round. Yay, I'm very excited for that. <laughs> Let's see. Jim, a few more questions about LSP of various sorts. Um, yes. Sort of complicated to answer everything, but I mean, on the C side, uh, give 11.1 a try because we've made a, a huge number of improvements there. Um, as I mentioned earlier at the beginning of the QA, um, our focus has been on you know, not, not for file new VCL app, but for existing projects. Um, so, um, you know, make, make sure that you have the file, your know, file name exists on disk. It can be modified in the IDE, and that's completely fine. You, know, you can type and change and edit as you wish and invoke co-completion, uh, but due to some current limits, so there has to be a file name with, you know, a file with the same file name on disk, even if it's modified in, in the IDE. Um, or, oh, and there have been a huge lot of performance improvements there as well. For Delphi LSP, um, we focused a lot on really large projects. So we have some massive performance improvements there as well, I think up to 30 times faster. Um, and those will be seen for any projects, but uh, you know the, the the biggest difference there will be for very large projects. Um, so you know, we, we've had tests where things have gone down from minutes down to you know a, a few seconds in 11.1, um, and that's because the main focus of 11.1 was testing and optimizing for very big projects. So there's some questions there about performance and about big projects, and that's that's the answer uh, for Delphi. Um, that yes, our, our focus was on big projects this release. So if, if you have really gigantic ones, then 11.1 is, is the release to try. Um, some other questions I saw, there was one about the IDE toolbar, remembering customized settings. Um, yes, that, that should be fixed in 11.1. Um, lots more coming in about Parnassus. Um, I, 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 Answered this briefly earlier, but uh, yes, we, we we had some issues around build systems and so forth. Um, but those should be coming. You know, the, the plugins, bookmarks, the navigator, and parallel debugger should all be coming with with 11.1. Uh, so so stay tuned. They're they're definitely coming. Um, let's Delphi see. Jim, you know? types. Um, I think that was something that was on the roadmap. I I would love to see nullable types. You can do you can do them. Uh, with the records though now, right? The, the what is it, custom record constructors lets you do something like that? 
managed records, yes, that, that give you uh, initialization or constructors effectively. Um, so yes, you can, although it would be really nice to have them natively in the in the language. Um, I think there's more question for Marco than, than for me because he, he looks after the Delphi side. Um, but I know we do have you know, Delphi language improvements planned. So um, yeah, novel types would, would definitely be, be on that list. Yeah. Um, there is a few comments here, David, actually saying that people appreciate all you do to help to uh, look after C++ and, and, and stuff. And it's interesting. Sometimes people say, well, there's a feature in Delphi that's not in C++ Builder. But actually, the reverse is true probably more often. <laughs> there are features in C++ Builder that I, as a Delphi developer, like, oh, I want that feature. <laughs> Especially when it comes to uh, using taking advantage of all those C++ libraries. Now, you can, if you have Rad Studio, take those C++ libraries sometimes and make them available to uh, Delphi. But uh, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I read those comments as well, and I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, yeah, I, th I think we all. On the team work to you know support both Delphi and C++ um, uh, well and it, it's interesting the the split between features I mean um, you know I spoke earlier for example about new intrinsics and other instruction sets um, you in Delphi of course you can use assembly and you know we've, we've made that easier now with C++ to use intrinsics and so there are libraries now um, so things sort of go back and forth a bit you know, usually something comes in one side and will be in the other one next release or, or, or vice versa. Um, but yeah, thank you for those comments as well. I, I, I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, I, I think, I mean, it's, yeah. Uh, and I'm sorry, I saw a couple people saying, hey, where's my question getting answered? I'm sorry, I'm trying, I'm scrolling through this, trying to see which ones we've missed. And it sometimes we've answered them out loud instead of, um, in the chat, so it's hard to know for sure. Uh, what is the extent of Python compatibility with Delphi 11.1? So the Python for Delphi library, you can take a look at that. There's some, um, we did a few webinars on it. You can find those or in the um, GitHub repository, there is links to documentation as well. There's, you can do quite a bit, essentially, uh, in a nutshell, it comes down to three things. You can use any um, Python library from Delphi, and most of those libraries are written in C, C++, so they are native, so they're very fast. You can execute Python scripts from Delphi, and you can make Python modules with Delphi. So it kind of gives you everything. It's really pretty much anything you want to do at that regard. You might, I really should go in a few minutes, but I okay. can see a few more questions have come in, which I might answer if, if that's all right. Okay. Yeah, go for it. Um, Please do. There was one about the speed that we're answering questions. Um, look, if, if we're taking a while to answer your question or we don't answer it, I, I apologize. Um, there are hundreds and hundreds of questions. I'm, I'm going to just ballpark and say, I don't know, 500 um, that, that we're scrolling through. Um, and and we, you know, we have multiple people here sort of trying to reply in text and, and so forth. Um, it, it can take some time, and also we sometimes may miss things. We're trying to pick questions, especially for the Q&A, that are, are sort of representative. You know, if we get the similar questions asked many times, we'll try and answer those. Um, but we may miss things. Um, I'm sorry about that, or, or may take time. Look, always email us. Uh, we, we are always very happy to, to get emails. Um, Jim, I don't know if you can put the last slide up on the screen again, but, but it has all our, our email addresses. And if, if we miss something, um, please just drop us a note. Um, we're, we're very happy to, to hear from you. Oh, yeah, um, I think I can do that. Let me see. Thanks. Oh, uh, actually, it does not have email addresses on there. Usually it does, but it doesn't this time. Oh, no worries. Look, it, it, it's actually fairly easy to remember. The, the email address format is first name dot last name at embarcadero.com. And our um, name should be in the corner right here. Yeah. Yes. So uh, yours, Jim, for example, is jim.mckeith at embarcadero.com and mine's david.millington and Marco's is marco.cantu at embarcadero.com and, and, and so forth. Um, our GM's Kyle Wheeler is kyle.wheeler. There is a pattern here. <laughs> um, yeah, so please, please drop us an email uh, anytime. Uh, there were some other questions there. LSP helping with anonymous method completion. 
that's a really good idea. Um, if you haven't filed a QP report about that, please do and drop me an email. Um, there's a question here about virtual folders uh, in the project manager. Yes, that's a feature that currently only works for C++ Builder. So Delphi people watching this may not know you can have virtual folders uh, in the project manager, um, but only for C++ projects. That would be very nice for Delphi as well. Um, there's a question here. I'm sorry, I'm just going to run through as many as quickly as possible. The question here about making cough files for Delphi um, through, through the C++ compiler. Um, now, for 32-bit, we use OMF, and for 64-bit, we use ELF64 currently. Um, there are conversion tools that will help you convert between OMF to COF and I believe even ELF to COF. Um, but COF isn't something we support natively right now. Um, it is something we look into. Um, the various reasons for the object file formats that we use, but um, yeah, we are thinking about, about changing those. Uh, Jim, there's a question about RAD server and RAD server light, which I don't believe I can answer, but do you know the, the answer to that? Um, what was the question? I don't know if I could answer it or not. Uh, just ask for, for uh, shedding light or, or some more information okay. about it. So RAD server is the, so um, the IDE ships with like a test platform for testing RAD server modules. So RAD server is a uh, Apache module that you install in Apache or an IIS module install in IIS on Windows or Linux. Uh, Windows is IIS, Linux, or Windows is IIS or Apache, Linux is Apache only. And then you then load the module you developed with RAD, for RAD server into that program, uh, into that module. So it's a module loading a module. Then, but when you're debugging it from within the IDE, it pop, pops up this little um, standalone local server that runs it. So RAD server Lite is essentially the same is that little pop-up debug server, but it, it's modified and set up for you to deploy it in production. Now, generally speaking, we recommend you use the full RAD server for production purposes, but if you have like a, uh, because and the reason is, is because uh, IIS and Apache actually get down, to, they hook at a lower level for the uh, HTTP server sockets. The but you can use the RAD server light if you're like, hey, I don't have a lot of traffic, it's a little traffic, I want something easier to manage and deploy, then that is an option as well. So that's what RAD server light is. Thanks, Jim. Um, let's see, there are a few other questions, um, a few ones about LSP and various issues, people that have been testing out 11.1 and are saying they're fixed. That's great, that's, that's what we want. Um, glad to hear it. Um, let's see, questions about C++ compile speed. Um, you know, C++ is a much more complex language and the compilers are a lot more complex and they are slower. Uh, we recommend using Twine Compile, which is a free add-on. Um, it's an awesome add-on. Uh, it's available on GetIt if you have update sub. Um, and that, that can really speed things up. So that's our, our recommendation there. Um, Let's see, <laughs> pictures of the monitor set up. Uh, look, all of us use different uh, screens there. Um, I have, I don't know if you can see really, uh, that computer from 2004 is not what I run Delphi on, um, but I do have a 4K screen here. I, I don't tend to use Multimon myself because I run Mac OS and use virtual machines and so use spaces. Other members of the team have two or three, some people even four monitors. Uh, Jim is the kind of person, I don't know what set up you have, Jim, but I assume it's crazy and awesome. Um, <laughs> Not as crazy and awesome as I thought it would be. <laughs> all sorts of things, multiple computers, um, there's, there's all sorts of stuff. Um, sorry, Jim, you, you said? I was saying it's not as crazy as I'd like for it to be. Um, <laughs> I, I, I currently have two monitors right now, although I, I do have a um, this camera up here. I can, in theory, set it up as a teleprompter, but it's not working right now. Uh, Ideally, I want to have it for like uh, webinars, so I can have the webinar, but it doesn't work with GoToWebinar for some reason. So anyway, yeah, I would love to have it more exciting and crazy. There's a question about a subscription-based issue report. Um, not 
quite sure I understand that, but I, I, I think the best thing to do there is to print a QP report. You can always contact support directly with, with issues. Um, and often they may ask for a QP report because those come into our system and that's, that's how we see bug reports. Um, so I suspect the answer to that question is to enter something at, at quality.embarcadero.com, but on just plain embarcadero.com, go to, go to support and, and file a support case there and you can mention the, the QP number in that support case. So um, Mary Kelly just put a link in for a blog post describing the screen red server light and rad server, as well as okay. a link for the ebook on the complete guide to rad server. Thanks, Mary. Yes. And Alexandre just suggested I should do a tour of my setup. Um, yeah, it's, yeah, that would be cool. Actually, I, that green screen, unfortunately, the software I use to replace the background doesn't work and go to webinar. So otherwise I could have a island or something back there. Uh, a few other questions. Um, let's see about uh, visual assist, which is something that we're, we're still you know, planning for. Um, so Jim, I, I think we've answered the majority of, of questions. Um, as I said earlier, we, we get many hundreds and I, I know there are some that we, we haven't answered and I'm afraid for the webinar we're sort of picking ones that have sort of multiple questions about the same topic. Um, yeah, it's it, 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 certainly if we haven't answer. answered. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, no, no, sorry, please, please do. I was going to say if we haven't answered your question directly, it may be that we thought we answered it and missed it or you missed what we said because we thought we rolled it to other questions. But yeah, like they were saying, just email us and someone's saying they don't see our names in the corner, but it's uh, uh, David dot Millington, M-I-L-L-I-N-G-T-O-N at Embarcadero.com and mine's Jim dot McKeith, M-C-K-E-E-T-H at Embarcadero.com. I had to, my doc, my daughter had her doctor's appointment this morning, so I had to call into the school and spell her name. So I feel like I'm spelling my name all the time today. Uh, all right. Well, thank you everybody for joining us. Thank you, David, for sticking around, help answer questions. Uh, sorry we couldn't get to all the questions, but as David said, it literally they, they scroll past and every now and then it just updates and I lose my spot too. So, hmm. I mean, we we have. I'm actually not sure how many attendees, but but a lot, and uh, of course a lot of people aren't I ask, ask questions, and so we get um, you know quite quite a lot. Um, for all that there's there's a large volume of questions we haven't been able to answer all of them. I, I really do appreciate getting them all. Uh, we save the question log. We will read all of them, even if we haven't been able to answer them all live. Um, and we really appreciate the the interest that you show by by writing in with these kind of things. So um mentioned emailing us a lot today, but um you know just just as a general comment, we really appreciate you watching the webinar and joining and um you know the 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 interaction here. It's uh, it's much appreciated. Yeah, absolutely. It, it is uh it's great to see so much interest in that uh helps keep us going. <laughs> all right well thank you everybody and love seeing all you're doing and seeing all your interest and seeing all the great things you're doing. Honestly, I I feel like that, um, you know, when I hear about the amazing things that you do with the development tools we work on, it really is inspiring. And I feel like it, we're, you know, we're all working together to make the world a better place. So thank you for that. It, it's very inspiring. All right, take care, yeah. everybody. And we will see you later. Absolutely. Have a good night or good day, depending on your, your time zone.